Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and this is another video in my Node.js and JavaScript for Complete Beginners course. In this video, I'm going to give you an exercise and I'm going to um, give you some tips and suggestions for how to tackle the exercise and how to tackle um, like programming tests in general. So uh, if you're a uh, like seasoned programmer in another language, this might be too simple for you. But if you're a beginner, it, it might be too complicated. But I'm going to, as I say, give you some tips for dealing with it. So um, let's go to a browser and I'm going to search for the Leibniz approximation of pi. Uh, so Leibniz was a kind of mathematician physicist. I think he was Dutch and he found a way of approximating the value pi. Now pi is just a number. It's a floating point number. And uh, what we want to do is uh, find an approximation for it. So pi itself has digits that's go that go on forever. Like it's an irrational number, so we can't write it down precisely. But uh, what we can do is approximate it, um, and we can make a value for pi that's as accurate as we want it to be. Before we take a look at this, let's go back to our code here. And I'm just going to start my program with use strict. I'm going to write console.log and if we write math.py capital letters math.py will actually it is actually a value an approximation of pi so it kind of shows us what we're aiming at math here is what we call a class and we'll look at those later pi is a constant so if I run this program let's write node and pyjs we get this value, 3.14159. What we're trying to do is produce this value approximately. So we want to get it right to at least uh, some of the initial digits. It is literally just a value. And we can do that using this formula. So we start with the value 1, which notice is the same as 1 divided by 1. And then we subtract 1 divided by 3. And then we add 1 divided by 5. We subtract 1 divided by 7. And we keep doing this. Um, let's say if we do it for maybe, I don't know how many, a 1,000 or 5,000 terms, eventually we'll get a value that's equal to a quarter of pi. So if we then take that value and multiply it by 4, we should get a reasonable approximation of pi if we've done this, you know, like, I don't know, 5,000 times. So um, how are we going to tackle this program? Well, if, if you feel confident, and this doesn't look too uh, off-puttingly difficult to you, then do pause the video and have a go at it. I'm going to show you how to actually write the program in the next video, but we're going to look at how to tackle it here. So um, the thing is, when you have some kind of test that you have to do with programming, I think the thing is to tackle whatever bits you can do. So you know now how to create a hello world program in JavaScript. That bit you can do. You can already do that. So or I would say already do that. You know, there's no need to think about how to do the whole thing necessarily in advance. Just do the bits you can to start with. And then we can start breaking this down. Well, what do we need here? Well, um, we need a series of numbers, which if we think of the first one, as being 1 divided by 1. Uh, we need these numbers on the bottom here. So the question is, can you write a program that outputs the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and so on? Because if you can do that, you've taken a big step towards it. What we also need is um, we, need to, we need to take 1 and divide it by each number. So if you can write a program that outputs 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on, it's not too hard to write a program that outputs the values 1 divided by 1, which is 1, 1 divided by 3, 1 divided by 5, 1 divided by 7, and so on. That shouldn't be too hard. And then there's this tricky bit. We've got to have alternating minus and plus signs. So uh, what you could do is take each of these values and multiply them alternately by 1, or minus 1. So then the question becomes, can you write a program that outputs 1 minus 1, 
one minus one one minus one and so on alternate alternating and you could do that by taking a variable setting it equal to one and in your loop multiply it by minus one every time you go through the loop because one times minus one is minus one minus one times minus one is one one times minus one is minus one multiplying by minus one will cause your value initially set to one to alternate so I'm going through this a bit fast, but that will give you all the building blocks that you need here. And what you'd need to do after that is you need a variable that can just accumulate all those values. So you take your one or minus one and multiply it by a third or a fifth or whatever you, you're outputting at that point in the loop. And just add those values to your variable every time you go through the loop. Then at the end, take that variable, multiply it by four and you should get a value for pi. So, um, especially if you are if you really are a beginner, have a go at this and write whatever bits you can. Break it down in the way that I've just um, specified. Break it down and see what bits of that you can write. If you can even write a program that outputs 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on, um, adding 2 every time, then that's really a good step. So I think the thing is, um, you, you learn a tr tremendous lot a tremendous amount by trying to write programs. In a way, it doesn't much matter what you try to write. As long as you keep trying to write programs, your programming ability will improve. And this is just one suggestion of something you can do. And if you try to write it, even if you don't succeed in the end, then you'll get some really good practice, I think, um, by doing this. You know, so just 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 have a go at it and see if you can break it down into different bits. Output values um, as you go along. That's the that's a really important thing, and see if you're a lot on the right track or not, and see see where you get with it. And in the next video, I'm going to show you an example implementation of this. We're actually going to write this program. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.